I am here with Josh from Play As Games. Before we get into the interview proper, why don't you take a moment to explain what Play As Games is and what you guys do. Alright, so we basically started originally about three years ago as a digital distribution site for Japan. And the whole idea was to take indie games from the West and translate them into Japanese and kind of try and help kickstart the indie scene in Japan. Absolutely. And then after a year, we started taking Japanese indie games and translating them into English. One of the first releases was Mala Moana, and we recently put out Mala Moana 2 Kickstarter and got that funded. And now we're just working on so many games, like I could go on all day about it. <laughs> it's because, like, how you guys started? What was your biggest challenge? with Mamba Mamba 2, by like getting it kickstarted and getting it out there. Because I, I imagine a lot of people know what Mamba Mamba is, but they don't know much about the company behind it. Um, you guys have much of a challenge getting yourselves out there, or was it a good, easy springboard, springboarding off of Mamba Mamba being like, what is playism? Mamba Mamba is playism. Paper Space is playism, and stuff like that. Like, I, I'm just wondering if it was particularly difficult for you guys to get it, or if the quality of your games more or less spoke for themselves. It was, it's always a little bit difficult because we, you know, we're all the way in Japan. It's hard to get a lot of, like, close contact with media partners and stuff like that. So I specifically actually came over for two weeks during the uh, Kickstarter campaign and went around to a lot of uh, media outlets in California and stuff. I went on to the Structoid, they put me on the live show, stuff like that. So they were a big help. We also just have a lot of support from, like, YouTube players and stuff like that. Like, it's very big on that kind of scene, so... I think the community was the biggest help, honestly. Like our backers were going to other like Kickstarter pages and like talking about it and bringing people from like uh, Kingdom Come and stuff like that. Like so, the communities are just crazy. Yeah, they really were a big help. Good product out there, it will spread like wildfire. I'm so happy to have one of the success. I've got to ask, how in the world did you guys end up with Hero Blaster and Pixel? Um, well, we talked to him last year at Mid-Summit. I mean, he's actually been old friends with the people from Mom Ma, the Nigoro guys, for years. So we originally were, I think, introduced from, by them. And, you know, he wanted to do the localization in a few different languages and stuff. And basically, we talked to him, and he always... We got along well, and he decided to come to us with all the distribution and publishing and everything. So we're going to handle the PC version, and the iOS version is basically going to handle on its own, and we're just going to help with the localization and some VR and stuff. There are no other versions planned currently, right? Not yet. No. So as far as your developers, each of them is bringing something unique. Yeah. Is there a specific type of Japanese indie game that you're after, or are you just not discriminating the least? Oh, content? anything that's good, basically. <laughs> I mean, that's what it comes down to. If I play it, I'm like, even if it's not a genre that I might be into, as long as I, somebody in the team is like, no, this is good, this is well designed, then we're going to take it. And anybody who comes to us, like if we have to search them out, it's a little bit different, but if they come to us and they're interested in going overseas, we're going to give them as much support as possible. Even if it's not a game that's going to blow you away, we still feel like they deserve a chance because who knows what their next game will be. What have you guys learned over the three years that you've been around? What is your biggest takeaway from working for planes? That's a good question. Probably just, I'm trying to think. Getting out to events like this is probably one of the biggest things. I mean, this is our first time being an exhibitor at any, like, Western event, like uh, somewhere in America or in Europe. We do stuff at TGS and we've done bit summit stuff. And I really think that's important because the Japanese indie scene is a very kind of closed community. You know, they don't really, I guess, get together and like share ideas and stuff that you see in the Western indie scene. So we really want to bring them over and like put some translators like me with them, have them talking to people. Like earlier today, we had Rami from Plant Beer come over and he was playing Carol Blaster and he was just giving feedback and stuff. Stuff like that's really important. And we want to just bring our developers out and get them meeting more people. Right. It's just a bigger part of the community, I think, is one of the biggest things that we're trying to aim for. There's so much to learn from getting to know companies like players on the It's you're not just picking whatever game you think is going to make the most money. You're picking no. games with personality, you're picking games that are good. You're bringing them to the library. I just think that's very unique. Yeah, no, I mean, I really do have a dream job. Like, I really just love being at the ground floor of the Japanese indie scene, helping out as many developers as I can. Like, I mean, I see some crazy stuff. Like, one of my favorite things that I saw at Bit Summit was, uh, it was called Alternate VS, and it's a flight simulator, not almost like an Ace Combat style game, but the guy thinks that Ace Combat's going in the wrong direction, just not doing enough stuff. It's uh, kind of like a whole framework, so you can mod it and add your own levels and stuff. But it's got wow. details that I, because I love flight games and stuff like that. Right. And you can do things like shoot missiles out of the air, 
your missiles, you know, in Ace Combat, like if you shoot a missile, it'll it'll hit its target almost always. Like here, even if you're shooting at a ship, it's anti-air trap fire will shoot it out of the air, stuff like that. There's that level of detail when you're talking to Japanese developers. That's just a lot of people don't think about it and notice it. And I think it's really cool, and I want to bring stuff like that to the limelight. I'm so happy with that, especially with some of the games you guys chose. You will definitely have impressions of most of these games all online. Thank you so much for your time. No, it takes a lot. It was great. It was great talking. So, where can we find you online? Where can we follow you on Twitter? Where is your social media presence? So basically, you know, our site itself is playism-games.com. The Twitter is at playismen for the English side. So, and then Facebook, I think it's just the playism page. If you just search playism, it'll pop up. And I wish Nyan, well, he's over there. He's the marketing guy. But um, right now, so we just released a game called Magical Battle Festa in English. And it is basically a magical girl virtual on game, two on two arena action, basically. Oh, that one right there. <laughs> um, that's a really cool game. I really like the developer. He's based in Osaka. Um, we also have a little free mini game from Carol Blaster that's out for free right now called Pink Hour. It just stars another character from the Carol Blaster like company, and it just went out in English. I think last night actually. And Carol Blaster is coming on May 11th. <laughs> so Carol Blaster is coming on May 11th. Ask to Breed, the shooting game you were talking about, should be coming in May sometime. Right now, the English is already done. He's just reworking some of the CG and talking to Steam and stuff like that. Otherwise, I mean, that's probably the biggest titles we have lined up right now. 